What is going on guys, Matt here. So today we are looking at the Cold Steel AD-10. Andrew Demko designed, uh, he has released these with his private Demko company for a while now, his kind of custom made, but a few years ago, Cold Steel brought these to kind of their company and uh, they started producing the AD-10 uh, by Cold Steel. So really, really interesting knife. Let's, uh, let's do some size comparisons, then we'll talk specs, what I like, what I dislike, and something unique. So let's compare it to another Cold Steel real quick. Cold Steel Spartan, kind of similarly, uh, I guess similarly focused, though this is quite a bit larger, uh, quite a bit more of a dedicated kind of tactical blade. Um, let's compare it to the uh, SR1 Lite that I did the destruction video on. Some of you guys thought that was satire. It was uh, just completely real. I actually shot it with numerous guns and uh, hit it with wizard light. No, I, of course that was satire, but it was pretty funny um so yeah similar similar knife two chunky boys as i like to say with a z on the end um now let's compare it to something quite different a lot lighter griptilian mini griptilian now if you look at these blades you're like wow this thing's teeny but if you look at the blade size not much different half inch difference so uh, and that brings me to the specs so on cold steel's website it says this is a four inch blade i looked at that and i said no, it's not. I've known it's not a four inch blade um, and I will prove it to you guys right now. Um, this is a three and a half inch blade. I knew that. I remember hearing that um, on numerous times. And just to be sure, that's a four inch blade. Um, that's longer. So three and a half inch blade on the Cold Steel 8010. It has, uh, it is 6.9 ounces overall. That's what the website says. Let's take out the handy dandy scale the eight dollar amazon scale and see if that's right okay that's about right right there are scale readings are probably more accurate than mine so we'll say it's about 6.9 ounces okay um and let's see uh g10 handle with steel liners as you can see in there are they milled nope they are not they're just thick steel liners it is four, uh, it has a four and seven eighths inch handle. It is S35 uh, VN steel, like many of Cold Steel's higher quality blades. It is 3.8 millimeters. And if you're wanting to pick this up, they go for around uh, 130 is kind of the uh, average price. You might see them up to 150, maybe a little lower, a little bit lower than uh, 130. Okay, what do I like? So this is a big boy, right? It's a chonky boy, as I like to say. It's not necessarily large kind of in length as far as, the uh, blade goes because it's only three and a half inch blade, but it's got a 3.8 uh, millimeter blade on a folding knife. See how thick that lock bar is. See how just big the profile is overall. This is a brutal knife and people have done numerous destruction tests on it. This thing can handle stuff. I think uh, this is just an overbuilt blade. That's not terribly uncarryable, right? So yes, it's thick and we'll talk about that and what I don't like. It's kind of a large profile, but it's not terribly heavy for what it is. Um, it handles quite nicely and as someone who's carried this not the specific one very much but many different versions this is I think the third 8010 I've had just got a good deal on this one um, carries quite well so I think that's that's good I think that it's a big boy that carries well so I really love the fit and finish on this as well now this is used but um, there's just something about the 8010 that Cold Steel seems to put a little bit more care into um, the pivot seems to be smoother uh, the lock bar um, doesn't seem to be as hard to disengage as some other blades. The Spartan, this Spartan right here, um, it's just not nearly as smooth. Uh, this lock bar is much harder to open. Obviously, it doesn't quite have as nice of materials being Austin and Rivery. So, but I think that the fit and finish overall is very nice. You can see G10, very nicely smooth. There's no sharp edges. Uh, you know, it's just it's just very well done. I think that Cold Steel does a great job on their fit and finish on most of their blades and particularly on this 8010. Well done on that. Another thing I quite like is the drop point blade. Um, this is a very simply designed knife that has a lot of qualities, that has a lot of good qualities to it, this blade specifically. So obviously it has a drop point, so that's going to amount to a quite a stout tip, but not being terribly stout. You know, it's not like the... Um, the uh, SR1 light, where now this is the Tonto version, but that tip's just very, very thick, so might not penetrate as well. <clears throat> um, along with that, a lot of drop point blades still have a ton of belly. Look how much belly that has. I mean, it's nearly half belly, right? And then straight, so very, very nicely designed blade. Um, 
I had a swedge cut out on the top, a little bit of jimping right there. Uh, that swedge makes a nice uh, design accent and also lightens up the blade. So blade overall, very impressive, very, very well done on that. Materials are also really quite nice. That goes with fit and finish, I guess you could say. Um, S35, uh, G10, nicely contoured steel liners as well you know there's no plastic in this right there's g10 obviously but there's just no plastic even that backspacer which kind of comes to a um defensive skull cracker uh point is aluminum it's not plastic so i think that materials very well done um you know just just overall very nice another thing i love is the comfort um this is an incredibly comfortable handle uh in my hand i have big fat hands you guys know that and this thing fits beautifully um, it just fits beautifully if it was any smaller it would not fit my hand and it's one of those knives that kind of completely encloses your hand so if you have any bigger hand it might not fit nicely but i think for most of you it's going to fit really really well um, these finger grooves are nice and subtle i don't love finger grooves but they lock in very very nicely um, they're the kind of finger grooves i don't mind because they're not too sharp you know, they're not too kind of pronounced. So love the comfort of the handle. And the last thing I like is the thumb studs. A lot of uh, cold steel blades, they do not have ambidextrous thumb studs. You can switch it over, which is nice, but getting that thumb stud undone, I know, is nearly impossible to switch over. So this just has ambidextrous thumb studs. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you're left or right-handed, no worries. Okay, so let's talk about what I don't mind. And it's just one thing. Um, I think that for the price, this isn't a bad deal, but I don't think it's a great deal. So uh, about 130 for an 8010 of S35. Now for a lot of companies, that'd be a great deal. But for Cold Steel, uh, a lot of their full-sized blades like the Recon series or the Code 4 series in um, S35, you know, high quality materials, they go for around 100 bucks. So I think that this one is a little bit expensive, but it's not a bad deal. So it's not something I like, not something I dislike, just, you know, it's a good enough deal. I wouldn't feel bad if you spent a buck fifty on this thing. Um, but there are other cold steel knives that will probably give you more bang for your buck, like the Recon series, like the Code 4 series. So, okay, what don't I like? So, I don't know why they do this. Eh, they they kind of do a half-hearted attempt at chimping, right? Do this a lot on a lot of their blades. You have some jimping here on the blade, and then you have jimping on the handle and the liner, right? But it doesn't follow through with the lock bar. All it would take is a little bit of milling right there. You just mill those three bits out. Um, let's see, what else does it? The uh, SR1 Lite, you can kind of see it does the same thing. Um, it has a bit of, you know, jimping kind of right there, but nothing on the lock bar. And I think the Spartan does that as well. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, never mind. Um, so I don't know what it is about that, why that design choice isn't kind of gone through fully. Like it's, it's like a half-hearted attempt at jimping. Um, the one blade that I know they do that well on is the Formax. They actually jimp out that liner. So I just, I don't get it. Does it add traction? I think a little bit probably. Um, but I just, I don't understand it. I don't get the, um, kind of ideology behind it. Maybe one of you guys in the comments or Cold Steel, if you're watching, let me know kind of the idea of jimping just the handle and not the, um, not the lock bar itself. Cause it kind of ruins the point in my opinion of doing that. Cause you're not really adding any traction. So um, another thing I don't love is this thing carry, carries quite high. Um, for how big it is, it carries quite nicely, but look how much is sticking out of your pocket. Um, that's a lot and that's aluminum. So there's just a lot of weight kind of at the top. Um, this also does come with another pocket clip um, for a left-handed carry, uh, but that's just a lot to stick out of your pocket. Um, it's also quite heavy for just being a three and a half inch blade. Now, I don't think it's terribly heavy because, uh, you know, the... Spartan weighs like 10 ounces. Now it's a little bit of a longer blade, but I think it's only an inch longer. Um, this actually isn't terribly heavy for its size, but it's still nearly seven ounces for a three and a half inch blade. Yes, it's very capable, but still something to consider if, you know, a three inch blade, right? This thing weighs like three ounces. So <laughs> big difference in that. Okay. So what's unique? Um, I think what's unique about this is the same thing with the 8015 is you're really getting kind of a custom piece uh, with high quality materials, with essentially custom materials at a manufacturer kind of mass produced price, right? Now this is mass produced, it's not custom, but you're still getting S35 and American made steel. It's made in Taiwan, which produces a lot of fantastic knives and is an ally to much of the free world, which I appreciate. Um, so you're getting kind of a custom piece at a manufactured price. 
Um, you know, the custom 8010s, I don't even know how much they go for. I know they're upwards of 500. They might be like $1,200, something crazy. Now they're usually in like 20 CV or another super, super high end, super steel. Uh, but I just think that it's cool that you're getting a custom piece for a good, you know, a decent price. It's not amazing, but essentially a custom piece with great materials for, you know, a manufacturer's price. I think that's unique. I think that's cool. Is it a recommend? Absolutely. 8010 is an awesome blade. Um, it's just, it's one of those blades that if you wanted a really, really beefy blade that doesn't weigh a ton, yes, it's still heavy, but it doesn't weigh, you know, 12 ounces like the Formax. Um, it doesn't weigh a ton and you could just use and abuse and honestly probably use for the rest of your life and never have to worry about it. This is the blade to get. Um, the Formax Scout's a little heavy for that, I think, but I think this is kind of the blade that you could buy. Just be happy with brutalize it and it would still kind of keep ticking and um, you know still be relatively carryable so guys thanks so much for watching remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video peace